it's another windy day. I'm here pretty much at the front of the medical center, which is just this cute little cottage behind me. And I'm having someone look at my ankle. I booked this in last week. This is the earliest appointment that I could have. So I called up on the Friday and they could only fit me in on the Thursday, the following Thursday, mind you. So that's what we're doing today. My little one is asleep in the car. Kids ran late for school today. So I had to drive them all the way to Renala from Jeepston. And then I had to find solutions for our compost toilet. And then I had to deliver overdue books. And we've had overdue library books because we were evacuated. So they were so, so, so late. But they were super sweet because even the library closed due to the fires and stayed closed for a period of a couple of weeks. So uh, no skin off their nose, basically, um, as you know, to use an old Australian adage. And so here I am today. It's a super, super overcast day, which I love. These are my favorite types of day. I love it when the clouds are gray. I do, I love it. Today's witchy vlog is on the fly here. And I wanted to talk to you about the impact of weather in your life. We all gravitate towards a favorite or preferred type of weather, do we not? There are those that gush over autumn, there are those that gush over winter, there are those that gush over spring and then summer. You see how where this is going. And so I happen to find that when you have a true and honest affinity with a particular season, that season aligns with an element and that element it has every chance of being your power element. The season that you despise, <laughs> that you like the least. Despise is a very strong word, so let's go with like the least. That season is probably your shadow element or associated to your shadow element. So this idea of shadow element and power element is something that I personally discovered probably at age, I want to say age 16, but I think it may have been just a few years early, maybe age 14. And it was through a conversation with my sisters. And as someone who is an earth sign, my big sister's an earth sign too, she's a Capricorn, and uh, my little sister's an earth sign too, she's a Virgo. So my other little sister, she's a Pisces, and she's very, very intuitive. And I was having a conversation with her. Holy dooly, <laughs> the car door nearly closed on me. I was having a conversation with her and with my big sister. And, you know, we were just mucking around. We were just, because we were kids, you know, we were, we were young and we were young witches. And, you know, we were just having this, like whimsical enchanted conversation if you will the you know the good kind where there is no judgment where there is just free thinking free flowing thinking where imaginations run wild and it was my big sister who originally noticed it she says she felt less than powerful uh during the summer period like summer for her really drained her she found that it had a huge impact on her mood, on her magic. And she said that she really loved the, the spring and the autumn months because she found herself creating so much. She would cook more, she would do more magic. Uh, she would smile more, conduct herself in a very different way. And, you know, we started to talk about this and I have always felt, uh, stifled genuinely stifled by summer I have never looked forward to summer in my life not even as a child yes you can go swimming and you can go to the beach but I actually don't love swimming I like standing in a waterfall but I don't love swimming swimming like you know many of my friends do and I don't like beaches I just I don't like I love I love photographing beaches I love sitting at a beach but I don't go to the beach for the same reasons as other people go to the beach and so I just, uh, the summer, and the summer had a unique affinity uh, to water in, in different parts of the place where I have lived, and <laughs> gotta go, hang on, I've gotta go because it's time for my appointment. an eternity or what's like that what seems like an eternity of waiting uh, finally got seen and I have to get an x-ray come here sweetheart yes so I will be making 
uh, an effort to go and get that x-ray either this afternoon which doesn't seem likely as I'm quite busy today um, or tomorrow because I already had plans to uh, to go into the city so I'll, I ha actually have to go into Kingston to do this which is pretty much in the city ah, country life so I sat with that conversation for quite a long time and it wasn't until I really came to Australia and I really started to take note of, you know, the new season, the new biosphere that I was in, my own energy uh, ebb and flow. There is a bus right behind me. Yeah, this is challenging. <laughs> that I came to understand that I just don't function well in in the heat but more than that I can deal with heat on a dry scale like I've lived in central Queensland where it used to get up to 40 50 degrees and I was fine in that heat it was wet humid heat the type where you would want to throw yourself in a cold pool for instance or you know take a cold shower or put like air conditioning on or, you know that kind of weather it sucked the life out of me and I also noted how I wasn't much of a water person I wasn't much of a swimmer because that's usually what people would do to cool off at that time of the year is to go to the ocean to go to the beach to go to waterfalls and rivers and just and pools and just play you know just really play and that wasn't that wasn't me that wasn't for me I wasn't interested in that at all so I came to understand my relationship with water and uh, and that opened my eyes in so many ways I just had a super tasty lunch and then came home to munch on some Oh, chocolate coated almonds which are a decadent treat for me um nevertheless back to the subject power elements and shadow elements i thought that i would present you with this information as a means to uh encourage you to pay attention to your biosphere and see if you cannot uncover a few hidden secrets or synchronicities or just incredible snippets of truth about you and your practice and the high points and low points. Once you can uncover your shadow element, it can help you to heal quite a bit, uh, more than quite a bit. And once you can uncover your power element, you can access deeper wells of power within you. And as a practitioner, to know oneself is perhaps one of the most crucial and beneficial aspects of your own personal craft. But that's just me and my personal humble opinion. So I'm going to leave that with you. Thanks for coming around with me. And uh, now I'm off to work because I'm here at my cottage underneath my wind chime. <laughs> Have a great day, folks. See ya.